buckling analysis. So let's discuss in this session the importance of the buckling factors and the type of analysis need to be done for buckling analysis. In generally, uh, buckling analysis normally carried out by using the different uh, software solutions by using the finite element analysis. But however, specifically for buckling analysis, the even the solutions has been developed by using the finite element eigenvalue eigenvector solutions need to be deployed to find out the buckling factors. So let's discuss in simple way what is this buckling analysis with the results how the data can be used for the real time projects. So let's we take it as a simple uh, column and see how the buckling analysis results will produce in terms of factors and how those can be utilized in the practice. So the buckling is generally occurs based on the stiffness of the member rather than the material itself. So that means let's say for like we normally call it the short column and long column. Long column will behave the buckling and short column will be go for like crushing force, right? So material remains same, but long column is occurs the buckling because of the failure of the stiffness rather than the material. So this is one of the example. So it mainly depends on the stability of the member rather than purely depends on the material strength. Okay, just an example is long columns. So simply we can say the buckling failure is due to loss of the structural stiffness. So in order to design the member, we have to make sure that the external loads within the limit of the stability. It should maintain the stability or stiffness of the member for the design and uh, safety purpose. Okay. Now the buckling analysis normally it gives the factors of the given load that requires to cause the buckling. That means when you do the analysis using the any software, structural engineering software, it produces the factors. That means for example, you have a 10 kN for a member. If your factor is 1, that means the 10 kN is good enough to take care of the load. If the factor is 1.2, means still you can apply 12 kN, then the member will start undergoing the buckling stage. So that is actually the factors. The slender and thin walled members are susceptible to buckling under the compression loads. Generally, these kind of uh, thin walled members, slender members will go for the buckling. So this is a generally called as a ILS buckling and we have ILS equation as well for calculating the uh, design concepts for the slender sections. Now, let's discuss about the factors. The limitation of the buckling factors, how we can use it. If it is a greater than 1, means load is within the limit. That means that the member have a capable to take care of the load of 10 kN. Your factor is 1 means it's fine. So, for example, if it is less than 1, means load exceeds the limiting load carrying capacity of the member. That means you apply the 10 kN. If the factor is 0.9, that means only 0.9 times 10 means 9 kN of the load can be able to carry that member. Beyond that, it may undergo the failure. Okay, this is actually a uh, interpretation of the buckling factors in real time usage. Okay, once we know the buckling factors and how that can be applied, in the next session, we will discuss about the buckling analysis, how the factors has been arrived in maybe with some examples. So this is a brief about the buckling analysis. So buckling analysis normally will undergo by the long columns or slender elements and the factor is as long as within the range, the buckling will not have happens. If it is greater than the lim limit, then the member will undergo the buckling. So one of the most uh, uh, failure in the structural system is 
due to the stability that means the bundling so the bundling analysis is very important to carry out the in the safety perspective so thank you for watching this video please subscribe to the channel for more updates thank you very much